My friends, there's a variety of different ways to integrate cosecant squared x. In this method, we're going to substitute cosecant squared x equals 1 divided by sine squared x. Now we're going to do a little trick. We're going to multiply the top and bottom by cos squared x. You can do that. That doesn't change anything. And if we rearrange, we get cos squared x divided by sine squared x times 1 divided by cos squared x. Now we're going to do another substitution where we set tan of x equal to sine x cos x, then this becomes tan squared x, and also secant x equals 1 divided by cos x. So this becomes 1 divided by secant squared x. And if we do that, this is what we got right here. So if we plug this into our integral, we now have the integral of secant squared x divided by tan squared x. And this might look like things got a little more complicated, but it's actually easier. If we use a u substitution where we say u equal to tan x, and then if we take the derivative, the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. You can check out the link for the derivative on how I did that, but it's like a standard derivative on, on what to know. So with this, if we substitute that in, we're now only integrating 1 divided by u squared because tan x is u, so that's u squared. And secant squared dx, if secant squared dx equals du. So we can reverse power rule this away. The integral of 1 over u squared is negative 1 over u. And finally, to get our integral, we'll substitute back in all its glory what u is. u is tan x. And 1 divided by tan x is cotan x. So that's it. There's another way to solve this integral that's totally equivalent to the way we did it. Uh, hang in there. Integrals are not easy to learn. But the more you do, the better you'll get. Hang in there. Cheers.